to survive goes on without end. Not only are animals eaten by one another for food, but their survival is constantly threatened by many other hazards. Fire destroys animals, their food, and their homes. Floods claim countless victims annually, as do the frigid blasts of winter, and disease plays an important role in this drama of survival. Man, too, is a destroyer of nature and takes a large toll of wildlife. With all these enemies and dangers confronting them, how do animal species manage to survive? Well, many of them don't, extinct through great changes in the Earth's climate. In 19th century America, there were billions of passenger pigeons, but reckless slaughter by hunters wiped this handsome species from existence. In spite of the many hazards to their existence, numerous species of animals like the sow bug, sow crab, have survived over long periods of the Earth's history. The species that survive the longest are those which are able to withstand the harsh elements and escape the hungry enemies of their environment. This film will show us how nature protects animals from being caught and killed by other animals. Here, a moth escapes being eaten because it is distasteful to the frog. Most often in nature, animals which prey upon others attack those which are smaller than themselves. But whatever advantages the enemy may have, a wide variety of defensive adaptations gives each kind of animal a chance to survive. Keen senses of sight, smell, and hearing help some animals escape from their enemies. The smaller animals, like insects, which are preyed upon by many alert and ever-hungry foes, have the ability to reproduce rapidly and in large numbers. On the other hand, large animals have few young in their lifetime. Their young take a lot longer to grow to be adults. But once they do, their larger size is an aid to survival, since they then have few enemies to challenge them. A pair for their young until they get a good start in life. Young scorpions ride about clinging to the mother for protection until able to take care of themselves. From these few examples, we can begin to see how great is the variety of defensive adaptations. But however great the variety, most defensive adaptations may be grouped under these three main headings. Hiding from enemies, fleeing from enemies, or discouraging the attack of enemies. There are many different ways to hide besides crawling under a board as this little frog is doing. In nature, Animals hide behind many kinds of disguise, hoax, and fakery. Can you see a butterfly in this picture? When resting, its folded wings make it look just like another dead leaf on the branch. Where are the two toads in this scene? Which stalk of grass is really a praying mantis? The markings of this rattlesnake blend well with its habitat. Patterns, colors, and shapes are common types of camouflage in nature. Some animals are all but invisible when they remain motionless in their various surroundings. This heliconian butterfly has a pattern of black and yellow which makes it less visible in flight. Its markings blend with the sun splotches and shadows of its habitat. Animals may also hide by burying themselves from sight. The blue crab of our ocean waters is an expert at this trick. Its eyes are on long stalks. 
They can be left above the surface to see what is going on while the crab's body is invisible. Open areas like prairies do not provide good hiding places for some animals. But these prairie dogs flee to their underground homes when danger approaches. Another prairie animal, the antelope, has horns and hoofs which it can use in defending itself. But antelope can escape from most enemies by their swift running. Even a baby antelope can run with speed soon after it is born. Besides running as a means of fleeing, there is hopping, swimming, crawling, and climbing. If the possum can't outrun its enemies, it can climb a tree with ease to escape them. Most birds have keen eyesight to help find their food and to watch out for their enemies. But this egret demonstrates how important flying is to birds as a means of escape. Owls and some other birds, like woodpeckers, make or find holes in trees. Here they have shelter for themselves as well as their eggs and young. Most animals attempt to hide or flee from a known enemy, but sometimes they are forced to face their enemies. Let's see a few of the ways in which they discourage their attackers. The porcupine can't move very fast but its body is covered with needle-sharp quills. The quills stick easily and painfully into any enemy that attacks it. They can also be forced into the attacker by a sudden slap of the porcupine's tail. The points of the quills are rough. This makes it even more painful to pull them out after they pierce an animal's flesh. Like the porcupine's quill, the stinger of a bee can also inflict great pain. This is a bee stinger greatly magnified. Here is an example of a defensive adaptation called mimicry. This viceroy butterfly looks very much like another butterfly, the monarch. The monarch is not attacked by birds. It is believed to be distasteful to them. Birds don't attack the viceroy either. It looks like or mimics the monarch so well that the birds can't tell one from the other. Another animal relationship is called commensalism. In commensalism, one kind of animal finds an advantage in living with another kind. For example, the remora fish has a suction disc on its head for attaching itself to larger sea animals like the shark. Thus, the remora enjoys free rides, part of the shark's food, and protection from its enemies which fear the shark. The nauseating spray of a frightened skunk is a very effective defensive weapon. It really discourages most would-be attackers. Here, a sphinx moth larva is well camouflaged among the leaves by its color and shape. But it also has a special marking, like a large eye concealed in the folds of its skin. When disturbed, it displays this marking, seemingly in an attempt to divert would-be attackers. The armadillo isn't much of a fighter, but tough, horny plates cover its body like a suit of armor. Its armor affords good protection against the teeth and claws of some enemies. The harmless hognose snake has no real means of defense, so it tries to bluff its enemies by actions which make it resemble a venomous snake. But this fellow is no bluffer. The diamondback rattlesnake has needle-sharp fangs for injecting a powerful venom into its victims. It strikes with lightning-like speed and can bring painful death to an enemy that dares to attack it. All of these defensive adaptations which we have seen point up the simple fact that to survive in nature, an animal must eat and escape being eaten. But this means that some must be eaten that others may live. And that is why, in the pattern of survival, some animals are adapted to hide safely, some to flee quickly, and others to discourage their attackers. For in this way, some of each species 
live long enough to produce a new generation of their kind. By these and many other amazing adaptations, nature has protected, fed, and kept alive an endless variety of animal species through countless ages of the history of the Earth.